We're going to go back to section 6-2 now. Um, so this is in our vector, our 6-1 packet here. We're on section 6-2. And we are ready for problem 2, which says find the angle between these two vectors. So we have two vectors. And obviously, if you have two vectors, they form an angle. So we're going to find the angle between these two vectors. And there is a little formula for this. So you'll want to write this down and maybe highlight it. But the cosine of the angle, this is the angle between the vectors. This is what we're looking for. The cosine of that angle is the dot product, and we talked about that last time. We'll talk about it again here to refresh your memories. But we're going to do, do the dot product divided by the magnitude of each vector times each other. So in order to find the angle between these two vectors, this is problem 6.2. 2a. To find the angle between these two vectors, we are going to need to, first of all, find their dot product. Okay, so the dot product, remember, is x times x, x times x, y times y, y times y, and add them up. So negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. So our dot product is negative 1. Now, we're going to divide that by the two magnitudes of the vectors. So remember, to find the magnitude, this notation means magnitude or length. We square the first one, square the second one, add them up and take the square root. So the magnitude of B is going to be the square root of 9 plus 1. 3 squared is 9, 1 squared is 1. So that's the square root of 10. And then we'll do U the same way. We'll square the first one, square the second one, add them together, and take the square root. So that's root 5. Remember, kids, that finding magnitude is the Pythagorean theorem. So we're squaring the first one, squaring the second one, adding them up and taking the square root. Okay, now, I would recommend always that when you get to this point, that you go ahead and multiply those together before you go to your calculator. So it's going to say the cosine of theta equals negative 1 over the square root of 50. 10 times 5. So the square root of 10 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 50. And I know that reduces, but don't waste your time. In fact, it just makes it harder to type in, actually. We need to find theta. So to find theta, how do we do that? We take second cosine. Remember, you got to do second cosine. When the variable is hooked to the cosine, you have to do second cosine negative 1 over root 50. So let's type that in in our calculators. Second cosine, negative 1 divided by the square root of 50. And the answer to the question is 98.13 degrees. So your job was to find the angle between those two vectors. So here's our little formula that we're going to use when we do that. We just find the dot product and divide it by the product of the magnitudes. And then second cosine. And that's your answer. Now that's a lot. I know. Oh, should I erase my formula? But I'll write it back down. Got to practice. You'll get the hang of it. So here's our little formula. Then take the dot product of the two vectors 
and divide it by the two magnitudes multiplied times each other. So it's magnitude times magnitude. And then that's the cosine. That isn't your answer. That's the cosine. So that's when we second cosine to get the actual answer. All right, so this is problem B. And now my vectors are 3, 2, and 5, 4. Those are my two vectors. All right, here's our formula. So we need to do the dot product. So remember, the dot product is x times x, y times y, add them up. So 15 plus 8, uh, what is that, 23. So the dot product is 23. So we have 23 on the top. Now we need the magnitudes of the two vectors. So remember, to do the magnitudes, we square the first one. So I'm doing V now. So I'll square the first one, square the second one, add them together and take the square root. So that's the square root of 13. If you have questions about that, go back and look at some earlier notes where we uh, talked about how to find magnitude. Square the first one, square the second one, add them together and take the square root. Now do the same thing for u. So the magnitude of u will be 25 plus 16, the square root of that, which is the square root of 41. So our little formula says take the dot product, which we figured out to be 23, and divide that by the magnitude of the first vector times the magnitude of the second vector. Now again, I would strongly recommend that before you go to the calculator, you go ahead and make that one big radical on the bottom. So 13 times 41, that's the square root of 533. So I would do that one simplification step. Multiply these two together, so now it's one radical instead of two. And then to get your answer, you're going to second cosine that thing. So when I second cosine, 23 divided by the square root of 533, I get theta equals 4.97 degrees. Now, the next problem, C, is absolutely the same thing except instead of giving you the coordinates of the vectors, you have a picture drawing. But it's exactly the same thing. So I'll just call the first one V, that's 6, 4. And U is 2, negative 3. So now they're drawn, and you can physically see the angle between them. So like one, this is the first one, this is the second one. You're actually finding the angle between them. To figure out how big that angle is. We're going to use our little formula. So we have to find the dot product. So x times x, x times x, y times y, and add them up. Oh, wait a minute. Is that zero? Zero? Okay, that's zero. All right, let's go ahead and keep going. We're all right, we're okay. It just turned out, our dot product turned out to be zero. All right, now I need the magnitude of each vector. So to find the magnitude, we square the first one, square the second one, add them up and take the square root. So the magnitude of V is root 52. And I know that reduces, but don't waste your time. You're going to type it in your calculator anyway, so I wouldn't even waste my time. 
This one is 4 plus 9, so that's another square root of 13. And then please go ahead and multiply 52 times 13. Oops. And I got 676. Now remember, that's the cosine of theta. So to get your answer, we're going to second cosine that fraction. So what happens, really cool, what happens when we divide, or uh, second cosine, zero divided by the square root of 676? Did you get 90? Now what's so cool about that? Well, 90 degree angles are special. These two vectors are forming a 90 degree angle. And if they're forming a 90 degree angle, then that means the vectors are perpendicular to each other because that's what forming a 90 degree angle means. Um, two comments about this. First of all, the minute this came out to be zero, Everything else that I did was a waste of time because in the end, it didn't matter what the bottom was. When you have zero divided by something, it's going to be zero no matter what. So I could have stopped the problem at this point when I got the zero and did second cosine zero. But the second piece of that is, I never have to do that again because second cosine zero is always going to give me 90. So any time that your dot product works out to be zero, if the dot product is zero, if you get a zero when you go to find this angle, if your numerator turns out to be zero, then we know V and U are perpendicular. Okay, now one more piece of information. In geometry class, you learned that if things form a 90 degree angle, they are perpendicular. And I just use that word. But I'm actually in vector land now, and so we're going to use the word orthogonal. Orthogonal means the same as perpendicular, but when you are in the land of vectors, you have to use the language of vectors. So just like we talk about scalars when we were doing our um, matrix operations called real number scalars, we are going to call perpendicular orthogonal. So we're going to use the word orthogonal. So if the dot product is zero, then V will be orthogonal to U every single time. So the minute you get a dot product of zero, you know that your vectors are orthogonal. Okay, I want to show you um, One more thing about those two vectors that maybe some of you noticed. And again, this is just another way of thinking about it. It's not a huge, huge deal, but it certainly is kind of cool. If I were going to find the slope of this vector, keep in mind this vector goes right 6 and up 4. So its slope is 4 sixths rise over run. This goes right 6 and up 4. So its slope would be 4 sixths or 2 thirds. Now this one goes right 2 and down 3. So its slope is negative 3 halves. Right 2 and down 3. Remember slope is y over x. y over x. Now what do you notice about these two slopes? 
why they are opposite reciprocals. And what did we learn in Algebra 1 about opposite reciprocal slopes? We learned that they are perpendicular. So the dot product turned out to be zero, but the slopes are also opposite reciprocal. So that's another way to think about it. All right, we have one more of those to do, I think. Uh, two vectors are negative 2, 4, and negative 5, negative 2. And we're going to find the angle between them. So we'll start with our dot product. So x times x, watch all these negatives now, plus y times y. So we multiply our x's and we get 10. We multiply our y's and we get negative 8. We're going to add those together so the dot product is 2. 10 minus 8. So my numerator is 2. These are not orthogonal, are they? Because the only way they're going to be orthogonal is if that dot product works out to be 0. Alright, what's the magnitude of the first vector? Here it is. Square the first number. Square the second number, add them together, and take the square root. So it's root 20. Now, what's the magnitude of the second vector? Square the first one, square the second one, add them together, and take the square root. So it's the square root of 29. Now, before we type this in on our calculator, let's simplify that bottom. So it's going to be the square root of 29 times 20, which is 580. And now we'll type second cosine. So we'll second cosine. 2 divided by the square root of 580. And I got 85.24. So the answer to the problem is 85.24 degrees. Okay. Now, the next set of problems says we're going to consider these two vectors. So I'm now on page 51. It's labeled 51. And it says V is the vector 2, 1, and U is the vector negative 2, 4. And I want to know if these guys are orthogonal, parallel, or neither. Now, you guys have lots of options here, but especially since we just talked about slope, that might be a very simple way for you to answer this question. Remember, slope is y over x. So the slope of my first vector is 1 half. The slope of my second vector is 4 over negative 2, which reduces to 2 over negative 1. So here is my first slope, y over x, rise over run, right 2, up 1, so uh, rise over run, y over x. Here is my second slope. Now what can you tell me about those two slopes? They are opposite reciprocals. So these two vectors are orthogonal. They're perpendicular. Now you could also do that with the dot product. If you took the dot product of these two vectors, x times x, y times y, and added them up, what do you get? You get zero. And we just got done talking about the fact that when the dot product is zero, the vectors are orthogonal.
But you learned a long time ago that perpendicular lines or orthogonal vectors have opposite reciprocal slopes. Parallel lines or parallel vectors have the same slope. So that is a surefire way for you to answer these questions using old knowledge. Okay, let's look at the next pair. This is problem B. Your vectors are 2, 1 and 6, 3. So this is problem B in part 3 on page 51. All right, so what's the slope of this vector? Remember, it's y over x, so the slope of this one's 1 half. What's the slope of this one? y over x. Oh, it is also 1 half, which means that problem B, the vectors are parallel because they have exactly the same slope. And parallel means you have the same slope. Alright, so C, we have uh, 2, 1, and negative 5, 7. So here are my two vectors, 2, 1, this is vector V, this is vector U, and I want to know if they're parallel, orthogonal, or neither. Alright, so what's the slope of my first one? 1 half again. What's the slope of my second one? 7 over negative 5. Well, do those have any relationship at all? No, they don't. So this would be a situation where they are neither. If the slopes match, we're parallel. If they are opposite reciprocals, we're orthogonal. Otherwise, we are neither. So this is a neither. We have negative 3, 1, and 2, 2. Here are my two vectors. All right, so let's look at slopes now. Slope. So the slope here is 1 over negative 3. Remember, slope, since you were, oh, babies, slope has been y over x. y over x. And slope here is 2 over 2, which is 1. Now take a look at these two slopes. Do they have any relationship to each other? Are they the same? No. Are they opposite reciprocals? No. So we have another case where these two line or these two vectors are not parallel and they are not orthogonal. So now we're ready for E. This is problem E. And we've got negative 3, 1 and 6, negative 2. We want to know if they're parallel, orthogonal, or neither. So here, what's our slope here? Our slope here is 1 over negative 3. Perfect. What's our slope here? y over x, reduce it, negative 1 over 3. Now, don't be confused. Remember in a fraction, the negative can go on the top or the bottom. These are exactly the same number. So since they are the same number, these two vectors are parallel. They have the same exact slope. So they are parallel. And finally, Problem F. The slope of the first one is 1 over negative 3. The slope of the second one is 6 over 2, which reduces to 3 over 1. Now, what's the relationship here? One's positive and one's negative, and they're reciprocals. So when they are opposite reciprocals, opposite sign and reciprocals, 
we know these guys are orthogonal. These vectors are orthogonal. Again, if you wanted to check with the dot product, you could. The dot product, x times x is negative 6. y times y is 6. And when you add them together, you indeed get 0, which is what happens when the vectors are orthogonal. Okay. Now we are ready to move into section 6.3. which says, eliminate the parameter. Now, I don't know if you remembered or not, but we actually did this um, earlier in the year. I forget which chapter, one or two. We actually did some um, parametric equations. So we're going to eliminate the parameter and identify the curve. Okay, let's not worry about identifying the curve. Let's just eliminate the parameter. So in this equation, you have an x and a y, and you have a t. The parameter is the t. Because that is the variable that's going to determine what your x and y are. So for example, if I said let's let t be 3, if you let t be 3, then you could figure out that x is 4, and if you let t be 3, then y would be negative 3. So t is kind of the determiner of the values of the variables. So it's called the parameter. So for us, t is going to be our parameter. Now it says in the directions, eliminate the parameter. So we're going to do elimination. We're really good at that. We practiced that in the last chapter. We're going to get rid of the t's. So I'm going to multiply my top equation by 2. So I'll have 2x equal to 2 plus 2t. I am simply multiplying everything in this equation by 2. And then I'm going to add my two equations together straight up and down. I'm going to add them straight up and down. Now you see what's going to happen right here. We have eliminated the parameter. It's gone. When you add, though, be careful. You can't put those together. So it's 2x plus y equals 5. So 2x plus y, I'm adding. So 2x plus y equals 5. Or y equals negative 2x plus 5. Now, I am perfectly okay with this right here. But you have to identify the curve. So sometimes if you write it this way, it makes more sense to you what this is. y equals mx plus b. This is a line. So when it says identify the curve, this is a line. And that's all you have to write. So here, here, one of these two right here, I don't care which way you write it. This is your new equation where you have eliminated the parameter. See, there's no t left. You have just, instead of having two equations with x's, y's, and t's, now you have one equation with just x's and y's. And it's the equation of a line. All right, well, that's not too bad. All right, let's look at the next one. Same directions, same thing. x equals 2 minus t, and y equals 3 plus t. Now, I'm going to write it down here, because if I'm eliminating the parameter, guess what? Isn't it all set up and ready to eliminate? Can I just eliminate it? So what does this equation say? x plus y, remember you're adding, you're adding. So x plus y equals 5, and that is another line. 
When you have x's and y's and nothing squared like that, that's a line, y equals mx plus b. You can write it this way if that makes more sense to you. y equals mx plus b. Wow, well this is pretty easy. Let's look at the next one. Well, yeah, this is a little harder. This is a little harder because we're not going to be able to just add them and cancel them out because that's a squared. This is not. So, in the last two examples, A and B, I used elimination. This time, it might behoove me to use some substitution. Here's what I mean. I'm going to get this T right here, this T, all by itself. Okay, now we got to be careful when we do that. If I add the T over to this side, add the T over to this side, then this is my equation. Now I'm going to subtract the Y over, subtract the Y over, and now I have T all by itself. So once again, I took this equation right here. I moved the T over here so it would be positive. And then I moved the Y over so that my T would be by itself. Now I'm going to take this right here and I'm going to plug it in right here. So I'm going to have x equals 2 minus y squared. Now, have I eliminated the parameter? Yes, there's no more t's. There's no t's left in that equation. If you want to FOIL that out, you absolutely can, but you don't need to. We're done. We eliminated the parameter. But that is not a line. When you have a squared variable, what shape do you have? What's your squaring thing? Think of your BFFs? That's a parabola. This equation is a parabola. When it says identify the curve, this is a parabola. Now, in the next unit we do, or actually chapter 8, we're going to talk about what that parabola looks like. It is a different kind of parabola. It's a sideways parabola because the y is squared. So it's got a shape like this instead of an up and down one. But it is a parabola nonetheless. When you have a squared variable, you are going to have a parabola. So I took my second equation, got t by itself, and then substituted that back into the first equation. And there we go. Looks like the next one might be similar. Now, if you have plain t's, I think elimination is usually the fastest, easiest way to go. But then again, you know I love elimination. You can always do substitution if you prefer. In this case, I have to do substitution because I'm not going to be able to eliminate my t's because that one isn't squared and that one is. Um, and no, 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 you can't just square everything. That's not the way it works, so don't even think about it. We're going to use substitution. So in this top equation, I'm going to move the 1 over. So my t is by itself because that's what I'm going to substitute in. Remember, you got to get rid of the t. So I'm going to take that t out and I'm going to plug in x minus 1 in its place. So I'm going to have x minus 1 squared minus 2. x minus 1 squared minus 2. You have seen that before. That, my friends, is a parabola whose vertex is one unit right and two units down. You can graph that one. That's one of your BFFs. One unit right, two units down, opening up. That's a parabola.
Okay, we have one more section to cover and then we'll be done with this little unit. So let's look at part two. It says I'm given a couple of points. And I am to write the parametric equations of the line through there. I'm going to write the parametric equations of the line through there. Now, this is really easy to do, but I need to give you a little bit of new stuff here to get you kind of used to it. We're going to start by writing what we call the vector form of the line. Okay? So, that it's always this way. Always. Make, take, it, take a couple notes here. It's always this way. So we got xy, always xy, equal to a parentheses, like a, like a point, like an ordered pair, a coordinate here, plus t times another coordinate. Okay? And in this first coordinate set right here goes one of your two points. So for this problem, I'm just going to use 1, 2. I like to use positive numbers. doesn't matter, but I'm going to use 1, 2. In the second one, does not go 3, negative 4. Oh my gosh, I wish I had a nickel for every time kids do that. The first coordinate set here is one of your points. The second one is the direction vector. So we have to find the vector from A to B. So from 1 to 3 is 2, and from 2 to negative 4 is negative 6. So remember the direction vector from 1 to 3, that's two steps positive, and from 2 to negative 4, is six steps backwards. Uh, remember, you can also do this by subtraction. Three minus one and negative four minus two. But somehow you have to come up with that direction vector and that's what goes here. Now, the direction vector is also the slope. So if you wanted to find the slope here, these are two points. These are not vectors. These are two ordered pairs. So negative 4 minus 2 over 3 minus 1. Negative 6 over 2. That's your slope, negative 6 over 2. Now, can you reduce that to negative 3 over 1? You absolutely can. Will your answer look a little bit different? Yep, but it'll still be right. So in this first parentheses, we're writing the equation of a line. So we have our point and we have our slope or our direction vector. Okay. Now, once you have it written this way, then you're simply going to break it apart into the two parametric equations. Parametric equations are x equals and y equals. There's going to be two of them, an x equals and a y equals. To get the x equals, you simply look at the first part of every parentheses. So x equals 1 plus 2t. x equals 1 plus 2t. And then you look at the second part. So y equals 2 minus 6t. If you reduced the, uh, the slope, if you did it with the slope and you reduced that, then you had 1, 2 plus t times negative 3, 1. And your equation would have been x equals 1 minus 3t and y equals 2 plus t. 
You'll say, oh, Mrs. Ford, those don't look the same. I know they don't, but they are. They are exactly the same thing. And that is my problem to worry about, not yours. You're going to do it whichever way makes sense to you. And then I will check to make sure that what you wrote is indeed correct. All right, well, I did a lot of talking. This is a really easy process, and I'm afraid I may have made it seem harder than it is. So let's do the next one, because it really isn't a bad process at all. So we have the point three, six, and the point negative one, negative two. And we're gonna start by writing the vector form of the line. So remember here goes one of your points. So again, I'm gonna pick three, six because I like positives, but you might pick negative one, negative two, and that is fine. It's on me to check it. You use whatever point that you want. Now, what goes here is the direction vector or the slope vector. Okay? So if you want to think about that as slope, I'm totally good with that. How do we find slope? We take y minus y, y minus y, got to do y over x, kids, y minus y over negative 1 minus 3. So that's negative 8 over negative 4 or 2 over 1. Now, be careful. When you put, if you do this as slope, which is perfectly fine, when you put it in here, though, make sure you're putting it in in the right order. Remember, slope is y over x. So this is the way it goes into the problem. y is 2, x is 1. Be very, very careful. It's easy to get that upside down. Okay, now I need to write the parametric equations. This is the vector form. So now I'm going to do the parametric equation. So I split it up. And when I split it up, I take all the first parts. There's three parentheses here. Take the first part of everything. So x equals 3 plus 1t. Remember, t is hooked on to both of those. So that's 1t. And then y equals, six plus two t. And that, these are your parametric equations. That's all the problem asks you to do, right? The parametric equations of the line, that's what we do. Just a couple more, hang in there. Now we've got negative two, zero, and one, one. So we're gonna start by writing the vector form of the line. So I always just set it up. That's the easiest thing to do, just set it up. That's what you know it's gonna look like. And then right here, put either one of these points. Again, I like to keep it simple, so I'm gonna put one, one there. But you can put either one of those two points here. Your answer will look different if you pick a different point, but your answer will still be correct. And then what do I put here? I got to put the slope there, guys. I got to put the slope. Okay, so here we go. The slope is y minus y over x minus x. So y minus y over x minus x. And then when I transfer that into my parentheses, parentheses are always x comma y, and slope is y over x. So your y is 1 and your x is 3. Your y is 1 and your x is 3.
So then the equations, the parametric equations, are x equals 1 plus 3t. Remember, you take the first parts and build an equation out of them. So x equals 1 plus 3t. And then the second parts, y equals 1 plus 1t y equals 1 plus 1t. Okay, one more. Awesome, awesome. Here we go. So our two points are negative 1, negative 3, and 1, negative 4. And we are going to come up with the parametric equations. So we're going to start with the vector form of the line. Oh, everybody's got negative, so I don't care. I'll just put negative 2, negative 3 in there. It doesn't matter. Again, pick one and put it in here. Now, what goes here? Not the other point. Oh my gosh, do not put the other point there. What goes there is the slope vector. So negative 4 minus negative 3, y minus y over 1 minus negative 2. So y minus y, x minus x. So that's negative 1 over 3. Now when you move that up here, remember, slope is y over x, but your coordinate here is x comma y. So y is negative 1 and x is 3. y is negative 1, x is 3. And then we're ready to write our answers. x equals negative 2 plus 3t. y equals negative 3 minus t. Remember, when you write the equations, you take the first part of every parenthesis, so x equals negative 2 plus 3t. And then the second part, y equals negative 3 minus t. Everything here gets a t, so it's a 3t and a negative 1t. And that is it for the notes for this particular little unit. Good job.